New reports have emerged within the last 24 hours that BMW, Mercedes and Audi will all use Chinese manufacturers and Chinese batteries to try and catch up on electrification. However, Mercedes-Benz will also use BYD Blade batteries. Now, what's really intriguing about this is that Toyota actually publicly came out and said they're only using BYD Blade batteries temporarily. They don't believe that they're good enough for the future Toyota EVs. Mercedes clearly disagrees with Toyota's opinion. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Now, the reason I mentioned Toyota's comments on the BYD Blade battery is that it's good enough for Tesla. Tesla use it in the Model Y. Um, it's good enough for Mercedes, but Toyota has publicly criticized Blade batteries, even though they're actually using them in China. I find that a very strange thing to say. Anyway, clearly Mercedes here are planning to use not just BYD's Blade battery, but also BYD technology, potentially BYD motors, potentially also even BYD production to make new EVs. Now, according to a recent report, it's basically the entire German automotive industry that is having to make the switch to Chinese EVs because they feel like they've been left behind. Mercedes-Benz will use BYD's lithium iron phosphate blade battery in some of its new EVs, in particular, the new CLA electric sedan. So probably in whatever country you're from, Good chance by the time the new CLA electric sedan arrives, it'll be powered by a blade battery from BYD. Chinese newspaper CBEA reported that Mercedes-Benz will begin production of its new EVs fitted with BYD's blade battery starting in 2025. Mercedes officials claim, incredibly, that the CLA will have a range of 466 miles or 750 kilometers using a lithium ion phosphate battery from BYD. Now that is staggering. And to give you some context on whether or not that's actually possible, it does seem like it would be. The Tesla Model Y using a 60 kilowatt hour blade battery from BYD, it has 455 kilometers of range, WLTP. Real world is getting close to that from the tests that I've seen done in Europe, independent tests. That would mean if you increase the size of that battery, potentially increase the energy density by 5 to 10%, which I've heard will be happening for blade batteries within the next 12 months, then theoretically, the CLA, which is a very slippery sedan, not a crossover SUV like the Model Y, could get this kind of range from this battery from BYD. Now, of course, the benefits of the lithium ion phosphate blade battery from BYD are not, not just the fact that is going to give you a decent range. It's also the fact that they're very affordable. They last a long time. Impact protection is very, very high. They're much less likely to set themselves on fire in the case of a crash. Longevity is obviously a key, but also you can charge to 100% and discharge almost to zero without really affecting the life cycle and without getting any real degradation on the battery pack. This move makes sense for Mercedes-Benz and BYD, as they do have a history. Mercedes-Benz and BYD created a joint venture called Denza many, many years ago. The Denza sub-brand never really took off. That was until recently when BYD actually bought out the majority of Mercedes-Benz's estate. Mercedes-Benz really owned 50%. They now own only 10%. But Denza now have a range of electric cars and their sales are really beginning to take off. The other reason this makes sense is because Mercedes-Benz doesn't have a whole lot of electric car production, at least not affordable production anyway. BYD can basically fill that gap. Right now, Mercedes-Benz only use ternary batteries or nickel manganese cobalt batteries for their EVs. And those battery packs, of course, are a fair bit more expensive, probably around 30%, maybe 40% more expensive than BYD's blade batteries. Mercedes-Benz CEO Ola Kalanius said at the IAA Mobility Show in Munich how the company will deal with costs, including battery raw materials, 
to enhance its profit margins. And he explained that this was one of the ways that they could do this, use LFP batteries. The new CLA concept will be the first Mercedes-Benz EV to have an 800 volt MMA platform. Mercedes is calling the car the one liter car in reference to its energy consumption of around 5.2 miles per kilowatt hour. That's 12 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And as you can see from the, the design, it looks incredibly aerodynamic. In fact, to me, to my eyes, this looks like it could be the most aerodynamic car ever made. However, this newly developed EV is intended to be a more affordable entry point for Mercedes-Benz buyers. Now, currently Mercedes-Benz, they have a range of EVs, of course, but really in this, this segment of a luxury mid-sized car, they really then have the E-Class and they're quite expensive. This new CLA would, be, would sit underneath the price of the E-Class. It'd be a more affordable entry point. Now, obviously, the, the main way that Mercedes-Benz will be able to lower the prices on their EVs, in particular these kinds of models, is by using LFP batteries. And by now, well, by now Mercedes-Benz, BMW and Audi all well know that more than 50% of the cars that Tesla sell worldwide use LFP batteries. In fact, Tesla's brand new Hardware 3 home battery storage pack that many people have been waiting for is powered by LFP batteries and it's said to be a significant improvement over the previous versions. Recently, Ford, Toyota and Hyundai have also begun using LFP batteries. And the two biggest LFP battery manufacturers in the world are CATL and BYD. The reason that the Chinese pretty much own almost all LFP battery share, well, they own around 98% worldwide, is because there were patents on LFP batteries that only recently expired and China had those patents. One vehicle that you may be able to buy very soon with an LFP battery is also the Kia EV5 electric SUV. That will come with BYD blade batteries as well. Now, most Tesla vehicles don't actually use BYD blade batteries. They usually use CATL's lithium ion phosphate batteries for the standard range Model 3 and Model Y. Now, of course, the standard range Model Y in the United States, that's the only standard range model that Tesla manufactured, the one that's sold in the US, that doesn't have LFP cells. The Model Y sold in Canada and most other countries around the world, obviously Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, you get the picture, uses CATL's LFP cells. However, within the last six months, some of those cars, in particular, EVs being manufactured at the Gigafactory in Berlin, have begun using BOD's blade batteries, which are a very similar technology to CATL's LFP cells as well. That said, it's going to be a tough road for BOD over the next two years. The reason is this. CATL have some amazing new LFP cells that are about to hit the market. Two, two different types, in fact. They had their hybrid battery, which is basically a combination of a ternary battery and an LFP battery called the M3P battery. That uses manganese in the cathode to improve the energy density, but it has some of the benefits of LFP cells like longevity and price reduction as well. But CATL also revealed their new LFP cell, which is able to fast charge and up to up to around 350 kilowatt fast charging. Plus, they've apparently solved the biggest problem with LFP cells, and there is a big problem. They don't work as well in cold weather. In hot weather, they're brilliant. In cold weather, they, they actually lose their charge quicker than ternary batteries. But CATL said their new LFP batteries will work even better than today's average ternary batteries in the cold. In fact, apparently they won't lose any range at all at up to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Now it's yet to be seen how they'll work in the real world. But the point is, LFP battery cells are improving every single year. And clearly, even the premium German manufacturers are aware of this and have decided, yes, they're actually a really good idea. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And thank you for watching.